Want to get a head start in Subnautica Below Zero? Stick around. I'll show you how. When we first spawn into Subnautica, we will be here at this crash site. Just like that. Uh, you want to look around here on the ground and you're going to find things like flares, nutrient blocks, and bottles of water. Go ahead and search this whole area and get all of that water, especially if you're playing on survival. Um, these things are going to make a big difference to help you out early in the game. So we're starting to freeze, so let's go ahead and understand the user interface and go from there. The user interface holds all the information that you're going to need to know in order to survive. So the first two that we're going to take a look at is temperature and oxygen. They can be found here and here. And since we're above the water, we see our temperature larger of the two. As you would expect, when you go below the water, this will flip-flop and the oxygen will be the larger of the two because obviously that's the one that matters the most. I would like to do a side note here that if you go above the water, but you're still in the water, these two will flip and it'll be temperature and you can freeze. So if you bring yourself all the way up because you don't want to drown and you go to the next room, you will start to take cold damage. Now at the top, is our depth gauge. And once we craft a compass, the compass is gonna fit real nice and snug right up on there underneath it. And on the bottom is our hockey bar, and we can hockey up to five different items. We are going to die, so what we wanna do is go ahead and find this big pink flower, and we're gonna stand right up to it and warm up. As you can see over here, our temperature gauge has already recharged and we're good to go. As you Go to zero on your temperature gauge. You will start to take damage on your health bar and eventually you will die. There we go, all is well. You will start, of course, with about half on your food bar so you can eat a nutrient block, but honestly, save these for when you're really hungry because that is 75 food. And if you hover over anything in your inventory, it'll give you bonus stats about it. Those over here, it tells us food, 75 to give us 25 water uh, flares it tells us a little bit about that so that is one good way to figure everything out in your inventory and what it does let's head down this path and into the world of subnautica below zero this is subnautica below zero where there is almost as much above the water as there is below the water Let's dive on in and talk about resources and zones. Let's go ahead and pull up the zone map for Subnautica below zero. We're actually only going to deal with these sections right here. And it doesn't matter whether you're a new player or you're returning from the old Subnautica. There's changes between the two. And we're going to go over a few of them right now. So we're actually going to start in the shallow twisty bridges. There is three sections to the twisty bridges. The shallow twisty bridges the twisty bridges and the deep twisty bridges, which you can find in a cave on the floor. You just go through the hole and you're in the deep twisty bridges, but we're not dealing with that for this guide. So first of all, in the shallow twisty bridges, you can find limestone. You can either get either copper or titanium here. Galena is gonna give you either lead or titanium. Quartz, ribbon plant. Um, now that's the baseline for batteries. And if you played the old Subnautica, it used to be acid mushrooms. Now it is a ribbon plant. You can also find the fragments for the beacon and the sea glide. Now in the twisty bridges, we're gonna get limestone, galena, argentine, which is actually slate, but they changed the name. And uh, you're gonna be able to find silver or titanium. Calaverite, which is sandstone but they've changed the name and you get gold or titanium and that's pretty much how it is with the resources you either get the resource that that drops a 50 percent chance or you get titanium so it's either titanium or gold and it's 50 50 chance we also find quartz here ribbon plant table coral which is still used for computer chips and crystalline sulfur now crystalline sulfur we can actually get from the crash fish flower you also find the data box for the rebreather and the high oxygen tank. We can find fragments for the mobile vehicle bay, the sea truck, the sea glide, the laser cutter, and we can unlock the habitat builder here. The next section we're gonna be talking about is the Arctic kelp forest. Here in the Arctic kelp forest, we're gonna find limestone, quartz, 
creep vine seed cluster, which from the old game used to be yellow and now it is red. Creep vine sample and salt. You can also find the fragments for the grav trap, mobile vehicle bay, and the sea glide. Down below the Arctic kelp forest is the Arctic kelp caves. Here you can find limestone, argentine, alvarite, crystalline sulfur, quartz, and salt. You can also find the laser cutter, the mobile vehicle bay, and the sea glide. The last section we're gonna be looking at really is the sparse Arctic. There's not much here, you know, hence the name. Uh, here we're gonna find limestone, quartz, and salt, and we can find fragments for the sea glide. Now that we're inside the water, the first thing we wanna do is locate our drop pod. That's where we're gonna start. That's basically our little starter base. It's gonna have a fabricator and a little bit of storage and it's gonna give us lights, power, and keep us from drowning. So if you pull up your inventory and you come over to the third tab, your beacon manager, if you're returning from Subnautica, you will already know this, but there are many new players, so bear with me. You can turn it on off if you have a whole bunch of them you can turn them all off and back on you can circle through all kinds of different colors and i honestly urge you to go ahead and select a color that's going to make sense to you so i'm going to keep it on orange because that stands out very well so we could go right to our life pod, but we're not going to. We're going to start looking for resources, just like we talked about in the zones and resources. So we're going to go ahead and break up some of this limestone. We're going to get copper as well as titanium, and we already know that we're going to need both because we're going to need to craft. Kind of look in these little crevice areas right here. Also in these crevice areas, you're going to find veins. This is just raw materials like this copper here. This is really gold. So make sure you look in those little vein, like little cracks like this. Super useful, it's a mechanic that they've added to Below Zero that was never in the original Subnautica. And actually, it's quite recent. As we go along, there's gonna be fish here. You're gonna want to go ahead and catch fish or two because you're gonna need a snack. They're quick, you're gonna have to be quicker. That's all I can tell you. Once you have a sea glider or something, it'll be a lot easier. Okay. Continue on. There's a bladder fish right here. We would really like to get our hands on this one. It's probably one of the most OP fish in the game right now. So if we pull this up, I really want to highlight this before we go any farther. So the bladder fish, now this is a little bit more information, has six food. So if we eat, ate him raw, it would be six food. We'd also lose four hydration points. Now there's the thing about this guy is not only well, you know, you can cook him and make him food, but if you take him to your fabricator, you can make him into filtered water bottle, or you can get silicone rubber and wrap it around and use it as an air bladder, which would be like an emergency, get me to the surface real quick because I'm about to drown. Also, the hidden feature for this fish is super cool. Let's just keep continue on and uh, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Whoa, that was deep. Let's go ahead and get some quartz. Get some more limestone. I'm gonna need some ribbon plant. Okay, so we're at about 21 on our O2. If we come over here and we consume this, we are gonna lose four points. It also fills 15 points of oxygen. So you could get like a bunch of these guys and leave them in your inventory early game because you don't have anything like uh, O2 tank or rebreather or anything like that. Look, this guy's trapped here. We're just going to grab him. It's going to make it so much easier. Ah, Galena. Very nice. We got a little lead. Let's go ahead and make our way to the surface. There we go. And back down again. So I will continue to do this until I have an inventory full of resources and I'll be ready to craft. Among these... I will go to the creep vine. Now, if you play the original Subnautica game and you go to the creep vine, you're gonna expect the yellow seed pods. They're not yellow anymore, they're bright red. So make sure you guys understand that function and make sure you grab some when you're over there. So if you highlight over this one, this will actually help you fill water. So this will help keep you alive long after these three water bottles are gone, plus 10. Now it's not a lot, but it will keep you alive. 
Okay, so we have a full inventory. Now the first thing we want to do is go ahead and break down our seed vine cluster into things that we can use. So before we do that, we need to decide what we're going to use it for because you can break seed vine cluster into two different things. You can break it down into lubricant if we need that and we can break it down into silicone rubber. So if we go into our tools, we're gonna to decide on exactly what we're going to need. The first thing that we want to craft is the scanner. Now we need a battery and titanium for that, so we don't need to worry about that. We are gonna to need to make a knife so that we can harvest creep vine samples so that when we make an O2 tank, we need fiber mesh, which if we come up to basic tools, we need two samples of that. So now that we know we need a scanner, then we're gonna craft a knife, and then we're gonna make an air bladder. Now with this, there's a couple things that we're gonna to wanna to do. One is we're gonna to wanna to go back out to the Arctic kelp, and we're gonna to wanna to get a sample. So we're gonna need our knife for that. And I think I wanna do this first and foremost before I do anything else. Let's just get two and then come back. Now we have that, we can make that into some fiber mesh. This will increase our oxygen capacity by 30, which should give us 75. And now that we have that, we can go out and start scanning. There's two things that we wanna unlock early game. One is the Sea Glide, first and foremost, and we're gonna need three fragments to scan for this. And the second will be the Grav Trap, which will find pieces within the Arctic Kelp Zone. We're gonna need two fragments for that. Now from here, we want to deploy the grav trap in a nice area. I like kind of like this area right here, right next to the grab drop pod. And as you can see, it's going to start grabbing all kinds of fish. We'll even grab some resources too. And uh, you're going to have bladder fish for water and fish for food. And it's a really good way to stay alive early game. So let's go ahead and go over some tips and tricks that you can use to get ahead in Subnautica. Now, it's you're not always going to remember what each node will give you. If you go ahead and scan it, when you go back over it, it'll actually tell you on the bottom what you have a chance of. Like this tells us we have a chance of copper and such with Argentine, Galena, Calaverite, and all of those things like that. Now, as we come over here, to this zone and you can see these really cool stay away from those those will freeze you solid and there's also a little fish he looks like a little blower fish he will freeze you solid as well you will sink to the bottom and until you break the ice you will drown if you do not break it fast enough so be careful with that also while you're out and about and maybe you're looking for something specific this is specifically new for below zero we can say i want to make a repair tool. I need this. I need silicone rubber, crystalline sulfur, and titanium. If I go ahead at the bottom, you can see for me it's left mouse button, but if you're on console, it's obviously going to be something different, but we can pin this to our UI. Pin that. Come down. I can pin this. I can pin, say, this and this. Maybe I'll make a computer chip. And if we come out, it has everything there. And is also going to list in green what we have. So for titanium, I have one of one because I only have one piece of titanium in my inventory. Now, if we pull this back up and we want to take them all off, we can come back and individually take them off or we can hit the unpin all and all will disappear. The last trick that I want to talk about is Finding resources. You can use this right from the start of the game. Um, it's not easy. Sometimes things blend in or you miss it or like these are just kind of blended in and you're just cruising fast. You don't notice. If we go ahead and pull up our options menu, we come into accessibility. So the fourth one down and we go into highlight interactable. We click it. Now you can change the colors. I like bright pink because it stands out. Come back out. Now anything interactable will highlight that color that we selected pink. As we go along, I will show you what I mean. See, 
and it makes finding things, especially later on in the game, things like nickel or magnetite or anything like that that you're searching for will make it easier. The next thing you're going to want to unlock is the Habitat Builder, and that's going to allow you to make a base. So go ahead and click this video where I'm going to go over two locations where you can find the Habitat Builder. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future guides or tips and tricks. I've been Granddaddy Gamer, and you guys have an awesome day.